Ooh, it's your boy Ryan the Dreamer, and welcome to another part of The Sims 4 After The Bachelor. Subscribe to me on Poor. I feel like it's been 3,000 years since I've recorded a part of this series, and it's because it has been 3,000 years. It feels that way because that's the truth. Welcome back, everyone. How are you all doing today? Let me know. Let me know. So we're here with Claire. I feel like it's been a while since we've been with Claire and Paolo. Violet decided to stop by her iconic pink haired self. She's still sad. She's still going through that dude. It's completely fine. We're gonna, we're gonna let her. We're going to allow, allow her to do that. So we're here. I mean, everything in the house is pretty much the same. The general is still a cutesy poo little cat. Where'd it go? Where's the general? It pointed me in this direction, but wait a minute. Is it moving? Where's the daggone general? Well, the cat's here somewhere, okay? We, we, we know that. Bristol is still here crying her little lungs out. You know, she's serving vocals, and that's really cool and exciting. Today, um, none of the things that she listed on Plopsy have sold. Just want to put that out there. But we did add some new things to Plopsy today. We have this Daisy and Bluebells uh, vase. And then we also have this medium zigzag hanger for a plant in a round pot. So she's really been putting in lots of work. She's really playing, like, housewife almost. Even with, like, the dress that she's wearing. Um, I'm not sure if that is exactly what she had in mind. Maybe she thought this is something that she wanted to do. And now that she's actually here, she's thinking, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some room for changes. I don't know. I haven't quite picked up how she feels about this. I don't think Paolo has been that, um, like, interactive with the baby as much as Claire has been. So I think that's something cool that's happening that we can explore a little bit later. Paolo's at work. When he gets home, we are going to, or maybe tomorrow, we're going to go over his parents' house and visit his family because he lives kind of close to them. And, you know, they should they should be friends. They should see each other and, and interact as families do. So that's cool. I think what we're going to do now, though, because they're just, you know, here chatting up on gossip and all that, all that stuff. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go visit Ken um, because if we remember, Ken told Romeo that he was going to meet up with Emily today, but Ken is actually going to meet up with, what's her brother's name, Miles? Um, who is this man? I cannot remember her brother's name, it's Harley. He's actually going to meet up with Harley, okay? So we're going to go see that take place. So we're at the Salty Paul Saloon. We didn't stray too far from Burlington Bay. We sit to where we know. Here with Harley, who is just amazing. I love this outfit that he's wearing. I want to wear it in real life. We need to make that happen. Look at his shoes, if you can see his shoes. I just love that shade of green, and his whole outfit is just, it's shades of green, and I, I, I can't, I can't get enough of it. So here we are. I feel like Harley. He gives me kind of like naive airhead vibes, but not in a, an annoying way, not in a way that's like excruciating to be around. It's like endearing and it's admirable, you know? Um, and I think for Ken, it's refreshing to kind of be around someone like that after Romeo so controlling and strict and like untrusting and everything. He better not be leaving. He better not be leaving. Come back. Okay. I don't know if he needs to go somewhere or what. Everyone has these daggone future cubes. Why? What's the point? We're going to ask him to hang out officially. So maybe he'll stick around and stop trying to leave. Let's turn on this uh, this dancery. Turn on. We're going to do... Not Batu. I'm weak. Let's do alternative. I feel like Carly loves alternative music. And then I want to dance with somebody. Dance together. We're going to have him dance. We're going to have him cut a freaking rug. Is that a clown? I thought this was a clown painting. <laughs> it's not true. It's not Katy Perry. It's we're saved. Um, oh, they actually did the night on the town. I didn't even realize that that was what was going on right now. I think that that's neat. I just really feel like Ken is enjoying letting loose with someone. I, Ken is definitely someone that likes to have fun. And, you know, sometimes with Romeo, it's difficult to have fun. That's just that's just what I'm picking up on. So I think that that is really cool and really neat. Really, we need to thank Claire for introducing us to her brother, cause he's cool and his voice is so deep. I don't understand like why is his voice that genetically deep? He had to have gotten a procedure done to get a voice that low. You're just not born a baritone like that, you know. 
Well, Harley has tried to leave us for the last time. I'm, I'm sick of it. He just does not want to hang out. Tonight, I don't know if he's feeling weird. I don't know if something's happening in his personal life that we need to make up some drama for, but he just wanted to GTFO. And so we finally set him free. So the night's coming to an end. We will, I guess, pick back up uh, tomorrow with Paolo. If he has the day off, we're going to spend with his family. If not, we're going to have him take a vacation day. He's going to go over to his family's house for, for a little bit, okay? Okay. Um, okay, so it's the next day. You, it's Saturday, almost 11 o'clock in the morning. We're here at our parents' house, um, at least our mom's house. I don't know what has gone on or what has transpired. I saw that only his mom, his sister Belinda, and his brother Enrique are living here. His dad is nowhere in the household. I don't know where he's gotten off to. He's still alive, Carmelo. It said, oh, what? Did he get re- Wait a minute, did he divorce? Um. Wow, I don't even know where to start with this. <laughs> I did not plan this at all. I. Personally, I thought that they were going to get a divorce, like, further on. Like, I was going to plant the seeds of divorce today, but it looks like Carmelo really just had enough. And went and eloped with someone named Lana. And didn't tell Paolo whatsoever. So I guess Paolo was really trying to talk with his mom, like, why am I just finding this out now? I assume maybe it just happened, but she seems to be in a good mood. And so does Belinda. I just don't know... Did was this something that the entire family knew was happening before, like for a while, and could prepare for? Is it something that just happened, and they're all kind of in denial about it? I have so many questions, and why did no one reach out to Paolo about these developments? Um, I actually feel like Paolo is a little bit upset. Like, why did you tell me that this was happening and that the family was falling apart? I've been on a TV show, you know, trying to to find love and get my own family started. Meanwhile, mine back home is, is in shambles and things are not going the way that they should be and everyone decides to keep it a secret until I take it upon myself to visit the house and, you know, which is when I find out that you and my dad are no longer together and that he has gone off and got married to some woman named Lana who I have not seen of nor heard. You know, we're actually kind of upset that everyone kept this from us. I mean, honestly, we are. Even poor Belinda. I feel like he and Belinda have a very special relationship, but Paolo is pissed. Paolo was heated. No one told him this information and everyone's going to pay for it. I mean, quite simply, that's the way that, that things are going to go. Like, Belinda. Belinda, you didn't say anything about this either. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why everyone thought it was the best course of action to keep me out of the loop on what was happening with my mom and my dad. Where's, where's, where's the brother? Where's Enrique? We need to give him a piece of our mind as well. We're going to, we're going to cuss him out too. We, we, I mean, we really had quite a freak enough. We're pissing everybody in this house off. And it's because we ourselves are pissed. No, we're not smiling at him, Paolo. We're yelling at him because we're angry. I honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this information. I guess we have no choice. I mean, this is just shocking to me. I really, I, I didn't see this coming. Not, not now, not today. On the bright side, Paolo is still cute in his, in his anger. I just, I don't know. And Enrique is sitting here smiling like things were funny. And everyone's angry, so I don't understand what the issue is. I just, we're gonna, I don't know. We're just, I'm gonna end this part here. I'm just gonna call it a day. And then the part right here, because now I need to figure out what the frick is happening in the Rocket household. This is the last thing that I expected. And, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, is Paolo blaming himself that he didn't know? Does he feel so far removed from his family that they didn't even bother to tell him? Is that what it is? You know, if he visited the house and was had, like, one-on-ones with every member of his family, would that be better? He needs to find his dad and talk to him about this, too, like... Okay, 
Well, listen, I'm going to end this part right here. Like I said, we have a lot to think about, a lot to discuss. Um, so if you enjoyed this part, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to your boy. Um, and I will, I will see you guys next time. All right. Go and be great. Peace.